Yo, hey, we got your right favor on the podcast, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. We got the one and only. I don't even think he needed an introduction. He already called out Rampage for having a tattoo on his head. <laughs> Damn, you just going to flame me on a podcast like that? You said he went to Turkey or something? What do no, you mean? No, I, I didn't go to Turkey. I, went, I got it done in, in Vegas. Oh. <laughs> one, of my friend, one of my friends opened up a new company. I was trying to support him, and I was going bald. So I That went. was nice of you, man. I'm proud you did that for other people. <laughs> I, and I, I mean that. He's always done that kind of stuff, man. But hey. permanently for life, no, though, no, that's a big not, one. No, it's not. It's not very <laughs> embraceable. It's gonna. It's gonna wear off in a couple of years. Your beard? What are we talking about? Not here? my beard. My head. I tattooed my head because I'm going bald. I hate. Okay, wait a second. Did you tattoo your beard yesterday? No, I didn't tattoo my. Why beard. Why would you say that? Is something about his beard that throws you off? Well, it's it's lined up nicely. Mm. It's there's no grays. I got some grays. Agreed. I mean, I, what, I what do they say? Black don't crack. Yeah, mm. black don't crack. Okay, unless black smoke crack. <laughs> you smoke crack? I don't smoke no crack. <laughs> he did. Hey, yeah, hey yeah. but for real, I thought your chin was a tattoo though. Look, hey, <laughs> hey, when you, hey, hey, shit, dude, when you did, when you smile, that shit clap like a butt cheek. <laughs> 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 Nigga, your chin be twerking. <laughs> Make it, hey, make it clap. Hey, if you keep talking, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to spend the whole time in the bathroom watching it. <laughs> I may not come out of that motherfucker. You going to make the guest walk off? No. You going to be a bully like this all day? Oh, is that, is that, is this not here. He's man, got no one to bully. Just so you know, Quint and I go way, way back. Way back. Way back, what, 2003? Yeah, all the way back to uh, KOTC, baby. You know yeah. who it is? King, King of the, of the Cage. Cage. Oh, he know he's Come sitting on. now. Hey, what you talking about? Hey, We're I'm, Treblecock. He used to steal all your chicks, man. Yeah, I know. All the Asian girls. Yeah, I know. You remember that? Yeah, every every <laughs> Asian girl came in. They wanted Quentin. They leave with Treblecock. Yeah, yeah, and he had the hottest Asian wife, but I ain't never, I respected him. And yeah, I, and this I ain't is never a lie. I ain't never this go for This is it. a lie. Hey, no, they, they, I'm just no, no, they did it. They cool. They, he, okay. he cool. He cool. Right. And I never went for, I never went for the why. She was, she was Bless your there. heart. Man. I never went for the why. <laughs> I stayed away from, but you know what? Those were the good old days. I remember, Those were the good old days. I remember the first time I saw you fight, I'm saying, who is this surfer looking dude getting his ass up in there? He gets, he gets up in that motherfucking cage. <clears throat> he gets in that cage and he is, he is thumping. He is in the dude's face. He's like, all hard, just kick. I'm like, what the fuck? That little motherfucker kept thumping. He thumping them motherfuckers. And dude kicked him in the face. <laughs> he was going for a shot. Dude, right. dude kicked him in the face, and he didn't even stop. I said, oh, he about to get knocked out. That was Dave Velasquez. Man, you 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 ate that motherfucker, uh, kick like a hoagie and took him down. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this like it was yesterday, but yeah. uh, Rampage told me, because he would just, he was blowing up in Japan at the time. They had, uh, you know, I was watching all his fights, and you know, obviously loved, loved him. And then he, he said to me, he goes, you know, it's crazy. I usually, I get kind of jealous when people start blowing up, but for some reason I want you to win. I really like you. And I was like, that's cool. He goes, normally I'm a hater like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he said. And I Wait, go, I, that was a big, that was a big, that was a big compliment. Yeah, you know why I liked him? Cause he had, he already had like a, um, like a, like a, a gimmick like California kid, he looked like that, and 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 back then a lot of motherfuckers really wasn't they weren't paying attention to that type of stuff. And I, I paid attention. I said this guy gonna be a star. Yeah, and I knew it. I said, and, and, and the way he fought as well, the and, pioneer of the lightweight division. And he told me that, uh, I mean, I don't know if you remember this, but we were at uh, at the ADCCs when it was in California for the first time, and I was competing there, and Bruce Buffer was announcing. It was before I really like made made a, a big name, you know, on the small level, but, <clears throat> and Rampage was like, bro, you need to go all in on the California kid thing. He goes, it's a cowabunga, hang loose. If I were you, I just, I carry a surfboard around with me. And he was giving me a bunch of great advice, you know? And so, yeah, mentor, man. No, I'm not, I'm not it. falling, I'm not falling the, uh, I'm not falling the newest trend, but you know, no, no, we're keeping it. We're not going to shave, shh. you're not going to shave your head off and get <laughs> <laughs> I love it, dude. It's, it's amazing <laughs> to have you guys here today. Um, you know, we don't got Luke here for, for Rampage. Fuck Bully, Bully the whole time. So. Let's talk shit about him behind oh, his back. Yeah. He, so, ain't gonna, he ain't gonna watch this shit. He doesn't. No. Yeah. <laughs> Luke's not good at taking shit, though. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. no, no. Luke, Luke don't like jokes being made about him, but he's the no. first one to critique someone about their kicks, their hips, their, their format, their weight distribution. Like, the guy will sit here all day and analyze me. I'm like, Luke, I'm not fighting, bro. I'm making a, <laughs> making a TikTok. Why are you yelling at me? <laughs> Listen, we have you, we have Uriah Faber here, pioneer of the lighter weight divisions in MMA, former WEC champion, founder of Team Alpha Male, you know, coached against 
Dominic Cruz and McGregor and just such a pioneer in the MMA game for the new fans on the Jackson podcast. It's an honor to have you here. It's amazing. We know the the rapport and the relationship you have with Rampage goes, you know, years back and what you've done for the, the sport is fantastic. I kind of want to just go through a little bit of all of that and kind of just hear from you in, in, in your own tone, you know, what this journey has been like, because Rampage gets to sit here all day long and really just have these memories with people and go back and forth. And pe- the, the community really gets to see a good side of people. Yeah. That they don't really get to normally see because of Rampage's ability to let people kind of just be themselves, you know? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Not like I said, you know, we were in this thing in the very beginning together, which is crazy because we're, we're, we're young dudes, but, but lucky enough to be in a sport that is that brand new where we can kind of be one of the, uh, the founding guys for it. And we were in BFE fighting Indian casinos. Uh, when I first started fighting, it was two years before it became legal in California. Wow. It was literally like, it was a mess, you know, and, and, and Rampage was making some money over in Japan, but like, I think when I first started fighting, there's only what three events a year in, in the UFC and the, and the highest paid guys getting a, you know, 150, 200 grand, maybe if they win the whole thing. And, uh, I don't know what I was thinking. Cause there was no weight class for me. There was no, um, there's no real path to like make a career. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but I, I would see guys like, like rampage and, and he actually, I kind of like the kind of the way things go full circle. I'm still at these, these little events. Now I have my own local events, but it's good to, to like kind of rub shoulders with the guys that have made it and go back and see the new generation. And, and uh, we got to be there, you know, at the very beginning of this thing, 2003 is when I started. What's, what's the name of your, your, your event? Uh, A1 Combat. And it was, is up, up north? Yeah, we've done uh, <clears throat> all across California. I think this is our 20th event coming up. We're, go, we're going to the Tachi Palace uh, mm-hmm. for another one. And we... Uh, Do you we have, have an energy drink sponsor? <clears throat> <laughs> uh, I don't think we have an energy... Uh, no, we have a, a cider right. sponsor. But yeah, let's get this one going. Yeah. This is your This is your stuff? Yeah, it's my stuff. It's not bad. It's real healthy. It's like the healthiest energy drink going. All right. We got we got um, supplements and stuff in there for, for the brains. Like Harrison Rogers, he he um, invented it for... Um, for um, People that have like, um, you know, like he was in like the mental health thing. You know, some people like have like autism. Oh, yeah. Stuff. And some energy drinks would bring that out and people with autism, it would, it would mess them up. So he put like a- It would mess them up. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. People, they, they can't have, but some of those people can't have certain energy drinks. Those people. Well- what are, you, what are you trying to say? Some of those no, people. I was just repeating what you said. Yeah, man. some of those people. How am I supposed to say it? You people. Yeah, he put, he put ginseng, BCAAs, and I can't pronounce this shit, and Giga Globa. Giga what? Giga Globa. Giga Globa. I think you added a, a, a G instead of a B there. What's, what this not? is really good. I'm, I'm drinking it right now. Okay. Good stuff. No, it's the word. It's the other one before that I can't pronounce. Le, Giga Globa. No, not Giga Globa. Giga No, Latine. Listen, as we look at the history of the UFC and MMA, one of the most, um, I would say, prolific things that the sport has brought to uh, the community is the Ultimate Fighter. The show yeah. is just one of, what's up, Rampage? Who mm-hmm. you flipping off? Loco be making fun of me. Why? <laughs> because you, you know why? No, I'm not going to say it. No, yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't bothering y'all. No, it's okay. Mind your own business. I mean, it's just hard to look at you. He looked like a young Denzel now that he's losing all this weight. Don't, don't get me started on everything. You've been losing weight. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was fat What do you mean? Fuck. Wait, wait, wait. Why are you saying it like that? <laughs> we looks healthy, strong. Yeah. I no, he st- lost a lot sturdy. of weight. Sturdy. <laughs> Beautiful eyes, thick bone. <laughs> it's good to see someone could put Rampage in a little tight. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, hey, it ain't about me. No one ever claps back at him. But yeah, the ultimate fighter. One of the most prolific things I think the sport has done is being able to tie back the community of MMA to seeing what really goes on in, in a fight camp, in the fight world with fighters, how a coach works, how a team works. You all obviously have your own team and you have a very, very successful gym. Talk to me about the ultimate fighter, though. I mean, you you have some of the most <laughs> iconic shows and episodes and, you know. Were you and Connor? Me and Connor. Well, first it was Dominic Cruz. Cruz. We had the first ever um, live. Oh, look at this guy. Better late than never, man. <laughs> Better late than never. Looking intelligent. <laughs> Good to see you, brother. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. But, uh, yeah, the first ever live season. So, normally it's, what, six weeks, seven yeah, weeks? Yeah, it was live. It was live, which was kind of a catastrophe, I think, for, I mean, the season did well, but for the staff, it was the first time they'd ever done it, and it was twice as long, 
so that was kind of wild. We had, uh, you know, three months of coaching these guys up. So you really had a, a, a time to make an impact on the fighters, uh, made some great relationships. A bunch of those guys still fighting in the UFC today. Um, and uh, it was fun with Dom. I mean, Dom, me and him had a great banter and, and uh, talked a lot of crap. And, and I think he didn't end up fighting after that. He got injured. Mm. You, uh, never, you never fought him after that? Yeah, I fought him. You fought him later? Yeah, yeah, we fought him later. But uh, yeah, it was awesome. And then the second time was against Connor. How was that? How was that? How was working Bro. with Connor? <laughs> Connor's fucking awesome. Really? Oh, I love that guy. I was not expecting that answer. Oh, dude. Yeah, he seemed great. like a cool dude, man. Oh, I yeah. Like, I met him in Saudi, him. yeah. Oh, dude. We still, I, would, I was talking shit to him two days ago. I got, I'll play you guys a couple of the little voice memos. We still, oh, yeah, we still yeah. communicate. Bring those up. He's, he's a voice, he's a voice memo guy. You know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah Certain people are just voice memo guys. Yeah. Send you those voice memos. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's a voice memo guy, but, uh, but he's awesome. I mean, really, we, we went there and it was, I went there, I was going to try to get a fight with him. You know, there's a moment where we're like, Dana said, we're, there's absolutely no way we're going to fight. But uh, I'm like, I'm trying to talk him into it. He's trying to, and I talked shit to, to, to Connor and like said some public stuff at that time. They had, let me let the, let me have the UFC um, Instagram for a day. Or maybe it was Twitter back then. I don't know. I was out in um, London <clears throat> or Switzerland or Sweden or something like that for one of the UFCs and they gave me access to it. And so I used it and just talked shit on Connor because I was trying to get a fight with him back in the day. And that kind of culminated into us doing the, the reality show together. And um, it was like a slow, went in there, like didn't know each other, basically not liking each other and, and slowly became pretty good friends on the show. Mm -hmm. And people don't really know that because we kind of never really put it public. But by the end of it, we went out partying a couple of times and we had a lot of great conversations about business and, and, and got to know him as a person. And people are always like asking, is he fake? Is he real? He's just like rampage. He's like, he's exactly the same on camera as he is off camera and just like bigger than life. And, 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 you know, he's a, he's a guy that like, gets business, gets people. He, he, uh, in a lot of ways is a very, very loyal person. You know, even if you talk about his relationship or his friends and that kind of stuff. Um, and then he's got his, he's got his downfalls, you know, he's a little yeah. crazy. He yeah. got some, he got some issues, but I love Connor. He, he, he seemed like a good dude. Like I met him in Saudi. I told y'all already, man, I was, I'm the first Connor McNigger I told y'all. <laughs> Call me Connor McNigger. I didn't see that. Hey, I didn't hey. hear that. <laughs> you didn't see that uh, one? You didn't see oh, that I, one? I saw it coming. Yeah. I, sure, I just can't you, say it coming. Well, I, come on. You, you guys can't say it. You can't be one. I, I can't don't say it. I don't give a fuck. Hey, but for real though, <laughs> next time you talk to Connor, tell him to send you that picture that let's, we took. Let's it. make him a video right now. Yeah. Yes. Tell, yeah. Because yes. I want that picture. The yes. guy, tell, my him friend, we, tell him we need to be on the pod. Tell my friend, him My friend took a picture of us and he was shaking. And you remember that picture? Oh, it's all black. You can't see. The whole photo is pitch black. What do you mean? Don't even start with just nonsense. You sent me a photo. You said it's me and Connor, and he sent me a, a black screenshot. So there's no one in the photo. It's a black square. He that goes, was, no, that Connor, my, that, that makes sense. Picture. I wanted to post it, and that was my picture. Uh, and But Connor took one, too. I guarantee you Connor loves you. Now, yeah, man. I got mad love for Connor, man. He's done great things for this sport. The sport is what it is now because of Connor McGregor. I mean, he's a big, <laughs> he's a big part of it, absolutely. He's put a lot of people on, no Let doubt. Let me see here. Okay. So we want to say to him, Let's go. Hey, just tell Connor, send you that picture. Yo, Connor, this your boy Rampage Jackson. We took a picture in, in Saudi, and my homeboy, what, 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 he's not even looking at me. I'm going to send it to him. <laughs> it's a video. It's a yeah, video but, message. But you, you look. Man, he's <laughs> in the Stone Age, bro. Let me, let me translate. <clears throat> you have a picture that he wants because his didn't turn out. You guys both took one. If you could send that to me, I'm going to hook up to Quinn or just send it straight to him on his Instagram. All right, that's what's right. up. That'd be amazing. That'd yeah. be amazing. Because he's been get, asking hey, for this photo for and, an hour. And, and in, in anticipation and, and for thanks, we're going to say Black Forge on here real quick. Black, Black Forge, Forge, baby. <laughs> you know what that is? That's right. his bar in Dublin, Ireland. Oh, I got to go. Yeah, gotta it's go. sick. We should go. We should do a world tour. Hey, you know what? Hey, you know what's crazy? My family is from Dublin. What? <laughs> yeah, Black <laughs> Irish. Black, you, you didn't yeah. know? You are I'm, from Black Irish. Memphis. Black my, Irish, my family, Japanese. My family, this is how racist you are. Oh, my. This is how racist you are. I am not. Yeah. I'm just trying to catch black, up. Black folks can be Irish. Is, black folks can be Irish. Of course I, you can. Okay, my okay. I'm Irish. I, hey, I finna say today. Today, Dennis, you can say whatever you want. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm teach y'all a little piece <laughs> of history. Y'all know where I'm from. Yes, I'm from the south. Yes. So 
what y'all think my ancestors did for a living? <laughs> Buy property, <laughs> build businesses. You so, told me. So yeah. my my family my family owned people, and they was nice people, and they mixed with us. So I mixed with Irish. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you so know where it I, I would family, never doubt you. Do you know family, where it happened my, down the chain? What? Down the chain, like where, where it was mixed, where it became. Um, I don't know. My grand, my grandmother, my grandparents are, are, is mixed. And um, what we was taught is that uh, our family, they was on um, pains. They was really nice people. They left my grandmother uh, a bunch of land. My grandmother would have been a multimillionaire if she could have, if she would have known about taxes and stuff. And she didn't know how to pay the tax and they took the land there and they built a lot of stuff on it. And um, But what they did was... Um, my uh the the family that owned my family was in construction. They taught my family how to do construction and uh now all my uncles and cousins and stuff, they all own construction companies in Memphis. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I helped build the pyramid in Memphis. I've been, <laughs> these days, huh? Yeah, I've been doing construction since I was since I was born, you know. I was born into the to the family. So if I wasn't Me a fighter, too. I would be a construction worker. I'd be I, <clears> I, I could see that. I tried my hand at construction. I, you you did construction? Painted construction, <laughs> solar panels. I I, 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 got, I was I was I was working my ass <laughs> off trying to in between trying to get I, the fight I, game to work. I, I got a feeling that when he does construction, he looks like some people from the village people that group. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, hey, what, what did you hey, do? You know, they used to they used to call me demo man because I just come in at wreck shop. I just <laughs> give me the sledgehammer. I can see that. I, I, I thought I thought I you were I thought you were a plumber. we laying pipe all around California. And all around the world at this point. Right? Hey, hey, plumber, <laughs> Luke, hey, plumber Luke late to the show. He's always yeah. got something to add. You know, he had something to do. That's probably why he was late. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Well, I didn't so, know. Yeah, Ram Ram got the rest, well. Ranjay's got the rest of the world figured out. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep hey, it local. Hey, I was hang, he's, I was got, hanging, he's got an Asian American. Hey, Mr. Oh, hey, I was hanging out with uh, a Korean zombie last night, and his, and his wife is oh. cool, cool as hell. She, she told me uh, to come visit them in, in um, Korea. Korea. I'm gonna go over there and make a whole bunch of babies. <laughs> oh my god! I'm gonna have me some oh, I believe that. Yeah, I got to Korean zombies. I got Latin America. Said, you got Asian. So he I said got. that to Korean zombies' wife. He's like, "Yo, uh, what would it take for me to go to Korea and just get some girls and make some babies?" And the girls like looking around like, "He's serious." And he's like, "No, I'm dead serious." So in terms of in terms of the Ultimate Fighter, though, walk me through the relationship with Connor on the show. Like, was a lot of that staged, or did you guys really have beef? We weren't. We didn't have beef. It nothing was staged at all. Got it. It was all just. I mean, we talked a lot of shit, but I mean, he was cracking me up. I thought everything he said about me was really funny, and I said some shit about him, and he could take a joke too. So, um, was there any moments? There was a couple moments where things maybe got heated, at, but uh, it was mostly just riding each other. You know, like fuck. What do you, you, you say about your chin? <laughs> oh yeah, I said. Yeah, I, I said. Uh, I said, well, there's two, two. Yeah. Connor's, what's Connor's buddy's name? Who's, uh, who's suing him now? Whatever. I don't know. Oh, the, the Russian, Russian kid. Yeah, the Russian the hammer, hammer, hammer. Yeah, whatever. Um, he had a good one. He said something about. Why don't you go to the strip clubs? You got two butts, you'll get twice the tips. That was fucking funny. It was the only funny thing he hey, said the whole fucking time. Good. That, that was good. Was good. That was and then Connor and I were uh, just sitting there with Dana, and I go, man, there's no ring girls. I never I, I never thought about it. I said, there should have some ring girls at the Ultimate Fighter, like spice things up. And then and he said, why don't you just get up there and shake your chin? <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was a good, good idea. Man, dude, a lot of people they always tease you about your chin, like growing up in high school and school. Um, no, I think it's gotten bigger throughout the years. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, for Connor, especially when I cut and, weight. Yeah. We should make them a little bikini just for Connor. Right? I mean, maybe, maybe <laughs> they may, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 never, I never felt picked on uh, growing up. So but women I, like, but women like it though, huh? Women like, yeah, I would say, I don't know if they like the chin in particular, but. I bet they. Like I don't sitting. have any problems. With, I've never had any problems with women, but I bet they like sitting on it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this guy's a menace. You have to ask Rampage. Hey. You're a true menace. What? He's you a, a menace. menace. Man. He's a menace. Well, that's right, yeah. Well, she probably the one that likes it. Well, you, you, that's all yeah. you think about all day. Yeah. That's why. You, uh, that's training. why I got a bunch of kids. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, that's yeah. all right. How many kids do you have? <laughs> Is that? Are we allowed to talk I, about okay. that? I listen. This is my first time saying it. Um, I'm going. I'm going to be <laughs> ever. I'm going to be honest. 
I got five kids. I just had one. I got a baby four. Ah, months old. congratulations! I got baby trap though, so I don't. I, don't, well, I haven't been talking about that. You want to leave that in the pond? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. fuck. Oh, yeah. She all was right. trying to bring yeah. the motherfucker to the studio today. We love you for your honesty. Yeah, I, yeah. Take, I take care. Oh, you are. I take care of all my kids. I know that. But, Great dad. But, Great dad. But she she baby trapped me. Yeah, yeah. and so she knows that because you're obviously talking about it. I know. tell her. I say you baby trapped me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> she didn't take the plan B. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I made a mistake. Yeah, she one trapped you then for sure. That was yeah. all her fault. It was all her yeah. fault. It, it only takes it only takes one to tango. It was, it was all her fault. Hey, you see this? A good friend. He's saying you got to take accountability. Yeah. Rampage. It only it only takes one to tango. That's for sure. Are you always filling the well. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? You, you, know ever, what? you ever you ever you know you I want, pulling out rampage. You know what? It was <laughs> it was it was one drunken night, and, and I don't know if you guys know this about science, but uh, science. Uh, the Most High, our Creator, made us. He designed us to not want to pull out. It's, it's amazing. Oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. So it's that's, the, that's, the worst thing. That's God. It's also it's the uh, worst thing. In the depending best thing. on what you believe, that's also um, you know evolution. Like the guys that instinctively can't pull out have the most kids, and then their kids have that gene to not pull out. Yeah. And then here you are, Quentin Rampage Jackson. <laughs> right. Get baby <laughs> trapped. Not his fault. Hey, you're right. Hey, cheers hey, to he didn't do it, baby. Rampage, cheers. We love you. Cheers. Cheers, I'm man. About to cry. Hey, I'm about to cry. Hey, oh, nothing oh, better in the world than how it's a good one. Yeah. It's a good one. Listen, you know that. In, in terms of MMA talk, and we'll put the we'll put the pulling out to the side for a little bit. Rampage, we'll put you through a tutorial outside after that <laughs> on what to do. Um, talk to me about leg kicks. A, a lot of people. Yeah, you he's too. not teaching the fucking. No, 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 he's not teaching that one though. I can teach that one. No, okay. I'm still, no, no, I'm, no, no, I'm still right. ducking to no, my no, head no, movements. Have you done your 23 and me? Have you seen my head movements? <laughs> Anyways, okay. You yeah. got some kids. You got some kids. You ain't talking about. He for sure does. But we'll we'll do that one off off air because one of his kids, you might know him. <laughs> he said what? So in terms of leg kicks, there's a lot of things on the internet, and we know that you're such a an analytical guy of the game. Obviously, your gym puts together a lot of the top fighters, and you guys have produced some of the best fighters in MMA. But until that that Aldo fight, we feel that. You know, in the world of MMA, I don't think leg kicks were as utilized. I think that a lot of people didn't really, like, have a good game plan against them. People weren't really, like, studying that game, I would say, from from just based off what I see and what the world of MMA looks like. Can you run me through that WEC fight oh with Aldo and leg kicks and, and how that played into your mind? First off, I've I've been a combat athlete since I was, what, 12, 13, played football before that. That's the worst pain I've ever been through. I mean, it's literally, it was like getting hit with a bat for 20 some odd minutes in the same place over, over and over again. And it's all soft tissue. So it's not like a regular injury, like break a bone is a little different. There's dislocating things like cuts, but that's all soft tissue from like, like lower butt to, to mid calf. And, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, and I, you know, I think maybe. <laughs> did you? Did you I even feel like the butt, like the, the calf? The calf is hurt so bad. Like, well, I, I, I just, it's just throbbing. But, but I think you know, maybe, maybe the most famous guy at the time to get leg kicked. But those Muay Thai guys have been getting their legs kicked forever, and 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 you could see. I think back was it Pedro Hizo? Oh my God! Took someone out with leg kicks, almost like had Randy Couture's leg amputated. So I remember that, but for the time I was probably the most popular fighter, get my ass leg kicked uh, to death. So, um, well, you didn't like checking them. Well, the game plan, if you watch that fight again, the game plan was, I mean, first off, Jose Aldo has been playing soccer barefoot in the jungle his whole freaking life. Whoa. Then he goes whoa. and kicks. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. Yo, that's deep. Hey, that, hey, he went deep. Hey, okay. okay chill, shining. Oh, what? Chill, What's wrong with that? Chill, no. <laughs> is this deep? Is that the from jungle. the F three? Is that from years of abuse to the head? What's going on? I, I, you know what my problem is. I, I, th I thought I was fighting, but I started smoking weed when I was eight. Uh, you're not supposed to do that. No, no. you're not. No, yeah, uh, yeah you should. Yeah, be. whenever, whenever, uh, when Rogan talks about weed and he's all for it and everything, remind people your brain's not done till you're 25, yeah. and it affects your brain before that. So, yeah. kids, if you want to smoke weed, wait till you're. At least 20, Which, 30, yeah. 20, 28. Yeah. 28. yeah. So, but anyway, yeah. So, yeah. so what was it about leg kicks? Because you, we, there's a lot of videos of you on the internet that yeah. kids can just go watch. Oh, them. you should and just just look up Uriah's leg and you'll see some just disgusting pictures. It looks like a dead body. Yeah, it like, looks horrible. Legs, the biggest my leg's ever been. But uh, I would say, you know, on that, the game plan was literally like Master Tong was like, knows this guy's great at kicking. 
even if I check one of those kicks, you see what happens to these guys' kicks. Their legs get destroyed. Doesn't I would have been more likely to have get snapped. So my thing was going to be push kicks with the right timing. So I, I, for the first round, I like timed some push kicks. Like as defense, he kicks through the back leg. But as soon as he landed one, I knew it was going to hurt. I didn't know it was going to be de debilitating. So I had like a softball size like hematoma on my knee when I went back to the, to the corner, I'm like, what the fuck? I looked down and I could see it like that. And I, and, and then I was immobile. And so I didn't, I didn't prepare for that. So checking wasn't as much of an option when you're, you've got like, you, you can't use your leg properly. And then it was just like tough this thing out. I went five rounds, just got my leg kicked over and over again. Like, yeah, it was painful. It was I, I know, I know what he's talking about. When I fought uh, Ricardo Arona, I was acting like those leg kicks didn't hurt. If he would have kicked, if he would landed one more leg kick, I I couldn't I couldn't keep up the facade that I was hurts that bad. It hurt oh, that bad, man. man. It, it, those that, you can feel like normally in a fight you can't feel much, right? Yeah, your adrenaline going, but you can so feel like, the leg kick. Certain ones, like I, I I fractured my leg the first kick I did I threw against Yoel Romero, hit oh. shin to shin, right? It fractured oh. through. Is that Australia? The, yeah, in Australia, the first kick, and I was like, I went back to it a couple times. I was like, something's wrong. I was like, this thing could break. And I was like, but I, I almost had him too. Like he, he couldn't even walk out of the ring. He was a wheelchair, but <clears throat> I just didn't, you know, it's, he played, he played that poker face and, but my leg was like fractured all the way through. If, uh, I, threw one more, if I threw one more kick, I could have ended up like Anderson Silva. Yeah. But did you feel the pain? Like, while oh, you, it was, it was, it was very, there painful. was something real there. And I, I knew I couldn't throw it again. Yeah. I was but, like, I, I should have kept going back to it. Luke, we did go to the after party. I was there with him. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. Hey, what did you do? Oh, I had, dude, I had, I had to get so, there. Dude, I had Australians come from all over. Oh, my yeah, came yeah. in. He said what? Australian, what? Australians came from the Gold Coast, from Sydney. Oh, my bad. I, I thought I heard something else. Man. What did you think you heard? <laughs> Wait, what did you uh, think you heard? I got to hear this. I think I heard uh, that too. What did you hear? I got my lift sewn up. <laughs> I thought, he said, I, had, I thought I heard he said I had Austra Australians coming all over my face. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I heard. That's, that's what, that's what, what I, heard. I heard. What I heard? Was, bro, it ain't that kind of show. Look at his face, and well, I'm like, yo, chill, fam. Women can come too, so that's, that's not. I, I, I didn't say it was not. Uh, <laughs> I didn't say it was man or woman. Right. Yeah, that's okay. a real coach right there. Make sure the team's yeah. all good you, at you all coach, times. You co you coached him before. No, no, no but this you, is what he's been homies to deal with at the gym. We've gone on tour promoting shit. Together yeah. all over the world. Well, I know you uh, used to coach my my uh, homie uh, TJ Dillashaw. Oh yeah, yeah you that's your homie. Yeah, <laughs> watch your back. <laughs> hey, oh, we gotta get it. We gotta get into that one. I don't know the drama. I don't know the drama. <laughs> hey, no, let's go into let's it. Let's get back you into it. No, let's go in. No, no, I don't know. Into it. Is there? I didn't know. Is there drama or not? I don't know the drama. He never said. He, no, cause he know I'm cool. With, he never said a bad thing about him to me. Yeah. Cause TJ's I want to let nobody cool. talk bad no, about snake, me. Right, snake, to me. Snake Gate, the little Snake Gate. I don't know. Go back, I don't know about that. Go back I, to that. Where that came up with Connor too. Well, so, so <clears> tell <throat> me, tell me the drama. I don't know this drama. So, <clears throat> so the, the Snake. So I, I, I think first off, TJ and I have mutual friends, a bunch, you included. <clears throat> it is what it is at this point. My biggest dilemma in that whole thing was how I mean everything got put out on blast because Connor McGregor is a very insightful guy. We're sitting there. We, Me and Connor usually have like our moments where we talk where it's just me and him or when you line up to go out to fights, they place you here, they place you here, they wait till everything's ready. So you have like 10 minutes where it's just me and him sitting there waiting <clears throat> to walk out and they get all the shit right. And uh, he goes, what's up, uh, Dwayne, co his coach or whatever. Uh, had Dwayne Lovett. Yeah, had been saying a bunch of like shitty stuff on the internet, like just... You know, as a guy that's trying to promote himself, like the only one that wants to win is TJ and TJ is still on our team at this time, but Dwayne had gone. And so Connor is like, what's up with that weasel Ludwig, you know, talking shit on your guys' team and, you know, this and that. And I, and I, all I said to Connor, I said, bro, you wouldn't, I said, that whole situation is so fucking strange. I said, you wouldn't even believe it. And he goes, but didn't you, you know, you, you brought that kid up and, and he's, not saying, you know, says something like I said, bro, I don't even want to get into it. You wouldn't even, it's it's not even worth talking about. And he took that little bit to, to see the tension and felt there was something wrong or whatever. He just, you know, he knows how to create drama. And when TJ came in after his fight, because we were all rooting for TJ and everything else, came, came in the fight, he starts putting TJ, he starts like riding TJ. And at this time, Cody stands up for TJ and they almost get in a fight. <clears throat> so this... This all happens like the whole breakup between TJ and I and him going to his own, his other team and everything. It was like, all right, man, 
going our separate ways. Like you're not, you're, you, he said he's going to elevation team and they're paying him a salary and they got this big gym and all, like, like all these things. I said, that's fine. He wasn't the best training partner. Like, I mean, I think everybody knows like, and it, he was a very, very like reckless training partner. He's like got a reputation for that. So it's like, we've got all guys in the same weight class at this point. If you're not on our team, then like you can do your thing. And we you want to be friendship. We can work on that on our, on ourselves. So that happens. That conversation happens. I go, all right, cool. You're gone. <clears throat> it is what it is. Then the episodes come out where Connor starts talking shit. And so then everybody's talking to it about it after it's already happened for months. And so it gets like really brought up. And so TJ is going to put things in his light and become the victim and basically says that I kicked him off the team, mm -hmm. which is a full bold faced lie. Mm -hmm. And I fucking hate that. Oh, okay. And so now all of a sudden, um, so you never kicked TJ off the team. No, he went, he, he got, he got the belt and then he, and then he, uh, got, a paid to go to the new team, whatever it was, Elevation or mm -hmm. the sponsorship. And so, and then it just elevated from there. I'm like, bro, that's not, you know, that's not the truth of what happened. You left because of money or Dwayne or whatever it was. And you left the team. I didn't kick you off the team. Now, when he said he's done on the team anymore, I didn't let him train with our guys that are in the same weight class and he's trying to kill people. You know, it's not like Got you it. can cross train when you're not a great partner in the first place. And so the whole, the whole thing that's, that's an issue with us is his take of it, which I think he believes now because it said it so much time that I kicked him off the team or whatever the deal is. I don't care. We have guys leave all the time. I've got, you know, I mean, people come to my, my town and my gym to be a part of the team. I don't expect them to live there for the rest of their lives. You know, yeah. I got Chinese guys and Japanese guys and UK and, People go their own ways, but don't throw shade because you're getting blasted by Conor McGregor at the height of his, his thing and say that I'm the one that kicked you off the team when you went for money. Really? It was what happened. Do, you, was on, do you only train like smaller guys? You got any heavyweights and stuff on your team? Yeah, we got guys. Wow. Yeah, we got some, we got a guy. Want to uh, go train there? Well, I, I wouldn't mind. I like, I always liked oh. the name uh, Alpha Male. Yeah. But, but I felt, I felt kind of left out because I, I see y'all like, that's why I brought it up. You know, little guys training. Juan Archuleta was up there with you. <laughs> Juan, uh, Juan's been up there. Yeah. Yeah, I think Juan, Juan's talking about maybe coming guys. back again. Huh? What? what do you call them little guys? They little, they, they, they little people. <laughs> what it is, they're not little people. They're just lightweight divisions. Right. Little they're, people. <laughs> what? Yeah. They're, uh, they're I think small, small I, guys. How, how, uh, when you guys go out to the bars, how, how deep do you guys roll? On the <laughs> 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 well, I don't go out to the bars, but. Uh, I mean, there was a time and a place where, you know, you guys had to roll about 10. <laughs> well, hey, don't be making fun. Hey, don't, 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 don't make fun of my still, friend, Quentin. Hey, I'm still waiting for our uh, our jujitsu one on one jujitsu match. Man. Oh, we hello. Did that a long time ago. Uh, hello, hey. You gotta give me a couple months. I, I'm, I'm doing boxing now. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't done jujitsu okay, in a long right. time. So oh yeah, yeah. You got the fight coming. He's gonna be boxing Shannon Briggs. But speaking of jujitsu, you had a crazy like no gi match, right? Against the Gordon Ryan's brother. <clears throat> oh yeah, Nicky Ryan. And there's uh, a yeah, yeah. You tap, you tap Nicky Ryan. No, I didn't. No, no, no. But there's that crazy. Well, I did tap him, you and he tapped him. me too. You slapped him a few times. No, I was just being rough in a in a in a grappling match. Like that's allowed. Mm. I was doing what you're allowed to do. Yeah, but you, just, you should watch the match. Yeah. Did, did you hit him with an elbow? No. You can, you can make a mistake and do that in jujitsu. Yeah, you probably do it <laughs> yeah, when you Yeah, when you're going yeah. for something. You can't make a mistake. mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the jujitsu well, guys, they won't pay attention. You should be able to make that mistake. The Every truth time is, the guy goes for your legs, you should be able to make that mistake. Just, yeah. just make a mistake. The, the truth is, on that match, yeah. uh, you know, and Ryan, and, and, and at the time, he's, uh, Nicky Ryan had just blown through all the adults and, and won, like, all the competitions. And, and I'm like, yeah, let's do it, whatever. We had had a... a another quintet where we did like a five man team and, and, uh, his brother was on our team. So, so Nikki and I got to roll when it was just friendly, ro friendly, but competitive rolling. Mm -hmm. And he felt my game. I felt his game. I tapped him. He tapped me. Y'all feeling each other's game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, hey, hey. Anything I do becomes manly. So don't try to, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to make it unmanly. Hey, you, 
You got a lot, of, <laughs> got a lot of gay tension over here, which is cool. I think that's good. I don't. Hey, hey there's really a little. Bu- I think there's a awesome. bunch underneath all that. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's hiding. Yeah, you quit? Hey, he's hiding. So anyway, so so Rambo's the focus. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with it, man. But hey, we'll, we'll, keep looking we'll, at his shit. Yeah, and thinking you're about to he hit some of that shit. He just had a kid, man. There's no kids coming out of this thing. Trust me. <laughs> Any way you slice it. <laughs> what is it about your eye favorite shit that turns you on? What? <laughs> it's saying don't turn me on. <laughs> look, look, hey, he, he can't look even at, look at me yeah, when he's yeah, yeah, yeah. He got what, shifty what, what, what eyes, ma- man. What makes y'all think his chin turns me on? Every time you see his chin, he starts talking about girls and sex. Bro, it's getting weird. I yeah, feel the energy. Yeah, it's getting we weird. know the energy. We felt oh, the energy, man. Oh, that's three. That's my energy. I you might mean, have to mix in the water and take a lap and bring so, it back. I can't even make a sus joke anymore when I get turned back on me. <laughs> You're the only sus one right now. No. That's how you about a jujitsu match. Uh, you getting all hot and horny because you saw his chin. Leave it alone. So anyways, the only <laughs> reason why the, the jujitsu community invites me to do matches like that is to show how great jujitsu is. And I've done like seven, and I love jujitsu. Yeah. I'm a jujitsu geek. I'm good at jujitsu. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll put my jujitsu up against anyone in the That's world. That's why I'm not rolling I, with you. You, yeah. know, you know what I think? I think these crossover matches should be done in a cage because these guys are coming in and they're step. We're stepping into their world is just purely jujitsu. There's other dynamics of, of grappling, which is like wall bases. Everything should be based on self defense. So there's, well, there's walls in life. Yeah. And so when you in that in that thing, like you take them out of their element, you pinch them in the cage. You know they're going for foot locks, but you get a pinch them. So it's like yeah. I, I disagree. That was element, deep, man. Need, I know, in I life, know. yeah, there are walls. Now, I disagree. Things aren't going to be Luke, easy. Luke, you got to stand up. Luke is a different guy on this show. <laughs> I disagree. Yeah. You know why? I understand where you come from, but I disagree because it shows how manly we are as MMA fighters and how, yeah. how, how, how what, what's the word, courageous. We'll go into somebody else's arena and do exactly what they do. And, yeah. and a lot of times we'll do just as good or or, or, or better. Or better. Yeah. And that's that's what sets us apart from e- different athletes. Either way is good. I mean, I love the the, I the slap jiu jitsu you know, also, but yeah, I, slap jiu jitsu. I mean, yeah, I'm just great. saying, like, I like real life scenarios of like self defense where it's like I think the jiu jitsu games lost itself where it's all like. Drop, yeah, drop your ass and call him. For, you ain't gonna do that on the cement. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I was that's like, what I was saying about this match. Up, so, so I go and get it, homie. <clears throat> we both we both had our we both had our filling out process. I I took his took his back with a little uh, little little uh, inside um, guard thing. He he took my back. I think I maybe tapped him once. I think he tapped me twice the first time we rolled, but he was like new not to get his head near my my uh, my arms because of the chokes. And I was cautious of his leg locks and everything else. So when they invite me into a jiu-jitsu match like that scenario with against their guy who's like the golden goose at that time, it's so that I can mm. lose, really. And and I've done like seven different competitions, all high-level world champions. Um, Paulo Miao, uh, I've done, uh, you know, like all sorts of super fights and whatnot, not one of them, not one of them has had the same rule set. So I don't even look at rule sets. I'm just like, yeah, that's something whatever. we've always talked about. Yeah, it's like, it's what's the rule set? Wait, you can do this, this counts, blah, blah. So I go, I asked this time, I said, what's the rule set? And they go, you can pretty much do anything. I go, oh, cool. Mm. So I just, and, yeah. and you know, it's like the old box a, box a brawler and brawl a boxer. I just did that in jujitsu and then he butt scooted the whole time and they're talking how I'm not engaging. I'm like, you want somebody somewhere in a, in a grappling match, pick them up, put them there. You don't get to like, I have to play the game you're playing. He, he started scooting on his butt. So I went to my knees. I was like, all right, let's do it. And I just kept pushing him. I'm like, what are you going to do? Let's st- You want me somewhere to stand up? And then they're talking about how I'm not engaging. I'm like, well, we already engaged. We felt each other's game back in the day. Like he's keeping his head away from me by scooting. He's playing it safe. And I'm just like, yeah. you know, what are you supposed to do? But it's a fun match, and and they're all complaining about I hit him in the face. Yeah. That's not hitting and getting hit in the face. I mean, we we all know that. Rampage. It's yeah, like that's I, rampage I was, I was pushing him and making him uncomfortable. Yeah, I never hit him in the face. Yeah, I showed Rampage the video, and Rampage is like, bro, your eye is not hitting him. If you want to see no. hitting in the face, go fight a fight. He's he's a crybaby. Yeah, roll, yeah. A crybaby. Well, and, I'm not saying he's a crybaby. I'm just I'm saying, saying that I said, the, the, the comments. <laughs> I said, uh, yeah. well, you what, can what, say that because I never fought. About? I what never fought. So and I then people, and, and, and then also, it's like, yeah, like look, I can roll straight jujitsu. I'll do it all day. But when, when you're trying to win, it's different. Like mm-hmm. in camp, I, I'll play from the bottom, do all sorts of weird guards and yeah. everything else. But I'm training for a fight in eight weeks. I'm not. No one's getting 
getting on top of me and I'm mm-hmm. putting them in, in bad positions. So when we look at the landscape of what's going on with MMA right now, a lot of people like to know the history and they like to, to kind of settle the facts. Was there ever a relationship or was there ever talks of a fight with you and TJ after all the drama went down? Yep. Um, I, I don't think so. I mean, I had, I had retired and then came out of retirement. When I came out of retirement, he wasn't in the mix really. Um, they had kind of mentioned it, but yeah, I thought there was you know, a couple. couple there's a couple like, like maybe conversations, was, was but but the only thing is like we we both went through a bunch of fucking drama. Like we were kind of like mm. family that got divorced, and I didn't like to hear the drama. Every single person always brought it up, and to him, to me, it's just yeah. tiresome to hear about it. And unless you're paying me a bunch of money. Like, I'm not trying to relive. Now it's going to look at his per- perspective and my perspective. Like, that's just a bunch of BS drama. And unless they're going to make it worth our while, which you know they're not, then why would I even do that? I'm like, yeah. okay, how, how much am I getting paid? Okay, you want to pay me an X amount of money? Then I'll go through all the bullshit of the reliving the drama and everything else and have a tough-ass fight. And I'm I'm aging out of my prime. And yeah. It's like, if they're like, okay, here's, here's, here's a big-ass paycheck and, and go do it. But we never got to that conversation. Is there talks of you? I've I've heard this, and me and Rampage were talking about this. Is there talks of you and TJ doing a boxing fight in Qatar <laughs> on the on the Shannon Briggs Rampage card? I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's been a lot of talks of crazy UFC like I'm, so I'm, to say I'm, rivalries I'm, now I'm, doing boxing. I'm scheduled. To, I mean, I'm I'm uh, under contract with the UFC, so really, unless Dana says go do something, I can't do anything. Okay. Which I think he might he might be down. Wait, but, so you still have fights with the UFC? <laughs> yeah, I still get tested. I've never done a, any drugs my whole, any pee, whatever they're called. So are you still fighting? No, but I still, in, the, in just case I want to, but, you never but, know. But are you are you getting paid just to be sitting there? No. But I Yeah, how's that I work? Yeah, yeah, I don't explain know. I don't know. I mean, they just, they so I'm under contract. If if you, if if for some reason somebody drops out and I'm my name's thrown in there, I can't jump in if I'm not getting drug tested for another five, six months. The oh, only wow. way I'm gonna I'm gonna fight is on a short notice for a bunch of money for fun. And I'm and I don't do drugs anyways, so I don't it doesn't bother me if they, they test me. So I, I stay in the testing just in case something pops up so that but, I can always but, seize an opportunity. But shouldn't you be allowed to go and do other things and make money? Yeah. In the real world? In the real world. Yeah, yeah and I think they pre- they let Chad Mendez do uh bare knuckle. Same so if I really have a, have a, have a, an opportunity that I want to, I want to go after. But he I can would, say no. I would, yeah, he could say no. Like say, say if I'm a promoter over in Qatar <clears throat> and I got, and I got asked to bring some boxes over and I yeah. ask you like, Hey, let me give you a, a bucket of money for, yeah. And they, you yeah, ask, the uh, dude, I'll do it. I love boxing. I love boxing. I love jujitsu. So how does that work? Then you have to call up Dana and say, Hey Dana, they yeah. offered me this. Can I do it? Yeah. Has Dana allowed you to go do other things? Um, there was a, there was an ass a long time ago before I retired about a bare knuckle fight. And he was like, if he wants to fight, no. I'll just let him fight. You know what I'm, I'm doing? like, yeah, but the, here's the money. <laughs> That's what I did. I, I mean, how, how many I fights you it was bare knuckle. How many fights you left? I don't even contract, know, like you know? four or something like that. Yeah. I had about, I had about three or four left. And I just asked <clears> as my legs were beat up and I was like, Hey Hunter, you mind if I do this? There's money on the table. There's good fights. And he's a, they, they gave me their blessing. Is, that Hunter, is he a cool guy? I was with him last yeah, night. Hunter's I saw him my, last night. Hunter's cool. Hunter's we, had, cool. we had a laugh and I, and I FaceTimed Bob Sapp because the story is Bob Sapp was uh, coming to one of the UFCs that was in Vegas uh, not so long ago. And um, he was going to come. And he got two wives. And he wanted he wanted to- Two wives? Yeah, Bob Sapp got two wives. And he <laughs> Bless wanted, his heart. Yeah, he wanted to get tickets, seat, front row seats for his two wives because he was going to corner a fighter. He didn't want to just leave his wives unattended in Vegas, you know. They they had never been there. One's Japanese and one's like Latin or something. He didn't want to leave him there. And so and so I called Tiki, my manager, and Tiki said, Oh yeah, I'm with Hunter right now. Uh let me ask him. I, I, and I explained to Hunter. Hunter was like, Yeah, give him my number. I you know, I got him. I take care of him. Whatever Bob Sapp needs, you know, blah, blah. And then yeah. I, I I made the switch and everything. Then Bob Sapp you know, hit, hits me up a couple weeks later. He said, Man, what's up, man? Those guys never called me back. I'm like, what? <laughs> then so I so I cuss I cuss Hunter out. I didn't know he was a good guy. And then Find, come to find out it was Tiki that, that dropped the ball. Uh, Tiki, hey, I lost faith in Tiki ever since he stopped doing his, his died. I know, beer, man. man. He used to die I his said, beer. Yeah, blonde, he, to do a lot. he did it for like 15 years and yeah. now all of a sudden he, he, he did it forever. Away. He, he said he grew out of it. He said he grew out of it. I remember the first time 
I saw him without it. I walked right past him. And he was, <laughs> we all talk, it was a group of people walked right past him. I said, hey, what Tiki at? And he looked at me. He was like, right, right here. He looked at me and said, I'm right here, you dick. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Where your shit go? We're, I, we're, imagine if Chuck grew out of his fucking mouth. Exactly. Like, uh, what, yeah. what, like, what if Chuck went bald like me? Oh, no, and then that he had to, well, he had a tattoo of the mohawk on his <laughs> That would have been bad. That'd be great. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. That That's his be. whole image. Yeah. I think he made mohawks cool in America. Tiki was talking, we were talking about management stuff back in the day, and I said, man, the one thing I will let you do, you can manage my facial hair. The way you pulled that off was amazing, man. <laughs> women <laughs> the love The three him. stripes. Women, women love him. Yeah, they're like, man, they're like, they're like, this guy must be so calm. He's going to walk around goofy like that. He must, he must be packing. Man, I think, I, I, honestly, I think the reason why he why he changed because one one guy used to work for him in the gym, uh, dressed up like him for um, Halloween. No, so he's talking. He couldn't he handle him, that. No. He saw he saw somebody else dressed up like him for Halloween, and shortly after that, he stopped doing it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He, he was like, "Oh man, that's he, what I look like." He looked just like Tiki. So I, I, I called him. I called I, the other guy. I don't even remember his name. He's called him uh, Mini Tiki. Oh, he that's looked, horrible. He looked yeah, just I like would Tiki. change up my whole swag too if there was a mini me. <laughs> It's like it's like you making your dog chase me around the gym. If right. I saw that on camera, I would. I, I, I sick them. Yeah. I sick them on him though. But he, I guess he knew he couldn't win that fight, so he went out to you. He went what fight? What? My dog. I sick my dog after you, but he went out to bear. Wait, what? I, mean, I messed up. Eric, when you remember when my dog was chasing? Them? Oh, the dog, the dog. He, I, thought, dog. I thought you meant Tiki. No, no, no. Oh, no, no. My are, dog. I sicked him on you. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, wow. We, we, hey, we, he was ready for war right now. Yeah, yeah. Yo, we, we get it. You're still in the pool. You're still uh, getting tested. Chill. Here, here we go. That's what I want to yeah. say. I want to say. I want to say about the fight. This is what I'm doing now. I'm talking to these guys in Qatar. I want to do grudge matches. Everybody. I'm calling out titties. I'm gonna kick titties ass, Vanellay's ass, and uh, I like it. Yeah, grudge matches. Who else you want? Vanderlei, titties. Uh, Vanderlei, titties. Briggs. Who's uh, Riggs, titties? Briggs first. Titties Fedor? From, titties from Ultimate. Maybe Fedor? No, I don't got no problem with Fedor. But I do, but I do want, I do want to, I do want to rematch him though, because he beat me. I don't got no problem with Mike Tyson. You don't want to box Mike Tyson? I, I, I will, but I don't, but this is grudge matches. Oh, it has to be a grudge. It has to be a grudge. You don't have any other grudges? Yeah. Um, um, what's his name? Glover. I want to I want to rematch him. Yeah. And Shogun. Your newest baby mama, she trapped you. Yeah, but you can't beat bitches ass these yeah. days. You can let Guitar. you can let her beat you <laughs> up though. No, I just get paid for she it. She already beat me up. Yeah, yeah. All right. She already beat me. She, <laughs> listen, as we ultimately mob through the the idea of Rampage going to Qatar and going through grudge matches. What's I wrong can, with that? Because you're gonna end up staying there for like a year and never sh come back and do these shows. That's not I true. Can just imagine. That's it. not true. But but what I would like for you to do is baby like bring me in remotely. Though. See, he already planning on not being here. You see that? That's why I'm about to give me a condo. I'm about to give me a condo in hey, Dubai, man. Hey. He, ever since he got the tattooed hair, man, he's been thinking. Yeah, you're a different person now. <laughs> You've been using your Ramon, head. Ramon, I bet not hear you over there laughing. <laughs> hey, Uriah, who do we hey, got over here? <laughs> before you mouth off, you better go watch his last couple fights. Oh, no hey, that man can hit, I'm bro. Who do we got? Remember, remember when, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Crazy Horse knocked out, was he knocked out Wanderlei? Yeah, yeah. That's a good story. Yo, yeah, favor, favor. Who do we got over here? Let's introduce him. The real best quick. hair in MMA. <laughs> I thought it was Tiki. Yo, hey, come here. Hey, yeah. uh, introduce yourself and then and then let, let, let's get a little love. Who we got? Um, my name is Ramon Tavares. I just got signed to the UFC. Um, I came from the Contender Series. I just had my first UFC fight, uh, UFC 297. Um, I'm here with Uriah and I'm blessed to be here. Right yeah, you, he can manage him. Yeah, we we uh yeah we're working on getting him to. To the next level, but uh, more importantly, uh, my partner over here, Jared Roxburgh, has an amazing like documentary series, and he's the main character in it. It's fucking badass, dude. Yeah, I already and like this him. guy's story is is amazing, man. So you, got, I, you guys are all gonna. I already like him because he got tattoos on his head too. <laughs> hey, hey, Ramon, real quick, while we have you in here, just so we we give you a little spotlight, I appreciate you showing up to the Jackson House. What uh, what made you kind of link up with Faber? Uh, um. I was he's best friends with Gerard. I knew Gerard for working with the uh, for working with the docu series, and um, he he seen the talent that I possessed, and he told me that I'll most likely be a good fit with Uriah to give it a try. And I went to Team Alpha Male. Uh, I fell in love with the team. I fell in love with Uriah. You know, he's he's a legend in the sport, and um, he they all helped me in the, as a team and to get me to where I'm at today. So um, hopefully we could me and Uriah sit down, talk some management stuff, and. 
And uh, I feel like the sky's the limit for me, so I'm excited. I got a question yeah. for you. I got a question for you. Real talk, though. Who, who idea was it for you to get a blonde mullet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Hey, he's got a beautiful lady over there. She wears the pants. She might have had something to do with that. <laughs> no, it's just something I just wanted to do. I just wanted to, you know, look different, you know? So I, I was like... It ain't different from where I'm from. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey. hey. You gotta be careful with bear. Bear's over here trying to keep grabbing a hold of that. Hey, 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 Yo, Lou, 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 Lucas, Luke is so lucky he knows how to fight. You are so lucky you know how to fight. If you put, hand, if you put your hand one more time, I'm gonna walk out. I, used, I, used, I used to bully, used to bully kids like Luke in high school. Uh, God damn that's it, Luke. Funny. Hey, hey, Ramon, we appreciate you. Yeah, you. Yeah. It was good. We just want to. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate you. We got to get him some of this Jackson. Oh, he, oh yeah, we, yeah, we're yeah. going to get him all dialed in before we up. leave. Yeah. But it's cool. One thing I want to talk about, your eyes, the way that you look at talent, the way you look at, at potential in people, you've been, you know, iconic in that. In the sport of MMA, you have had so many legends come in and out of your gym. You've housed these guys. You've helped build their careers. You're still there. You're still in corners. What is it about guys like Ramon and other people that come through your gym that you're able to see this talent from so far away? Um, I mean, first off, I'll say game recognized game. And that doesn't mean like skill set. That means mindset. Mm. Right. And I think, you know, rampage, like when he saw me and he was like, all right, he gets, he gets me, I get him. It's a self belief that you just know, like I, I the best way to put it is <clears throat> if I were to tell someone <clears throat> before they started fighting, like, like rampage, like, Hey, I got a guy who will whoop your fucking ass. He would not be able to fathom that idea. It just, it just, he'd be like, there's no fucking way, you know, that, that kind of confidence is what I can see in people mm. and you can tell, and then you got to get all the rest of the stuff to match. And then there's guys that you can kind of teach that to and, and, and get them on that level. Like sometimes seeing it first, like, you know, uh, Tyson's a good example, had, had a, had a trainer that believes in him and got him thinking of that, then got him doing the right things. And as results happen, but I can, I can, you know, help with the technique i can help with this but my biggest thing is is the mindset and and making guys either believe in themselves in the process or sing it in them instinctively and you have and i see a lot of guys that that think that that don't have the other pieces a lot of times that's delusion you got to have delusion in this game connor's a good a great example of that i always use him as, as an example someone that saw a bunch of shit you know there's that interview of him as a kid like a pimply looking, you know, bald, bald kid, no tattoos. And he's saying, I'm going to have more money than generational wealth. I'm going to have this and that. And you could tell in his heart, he believed it. You know, that's the kind of thing that I try to foster and I can identify. And then the, the hard work and, and staying humble after that. I mean, I told TJ Dillashaw, he was going to be a world champ probably before he believed it. Uh, Cody Garbrandt, same thing, you know, saw potential in Chad Mendez before, you know, I told him after I said, just get through your college and let's, and then start living the dream. Um, you know, game, game recognized game, but that's what I look for is this inner confidence yeah. and then, you know, consistency and persistence. Yeah. You, when did you start managing fighters though? Wow. Before I was managing fighters, I, I, Remember James Irvin and Scott Smith? Yeah, yeah. You know, we, mean, we did our camp out there I remember, back yeah, then. Yeah. I was managing them back then. I didn't know that. Yeah. Hey, tell James Irvin, I, I still got a bone to pick with him. He didn't want to talk for us that damn fucking leg kick that hurt me. <laughs> like, James Irvin is actually, he runs two of my gyms. He's like the best GM in the game. Mm -hmm. And he's such a quiet, humble dude. I was, like, I was like, bro, you need to put the picture of you doing your flying knee on the wall. Cause I don't think people understand. Yeah. He was James Earl was a bad yeah, man. He was a bad man. <clears throat> I've been, I've been managing people just a little bit, just helping out in Qatar. It's actually pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing is for a guy like you and me is we just got to know our role because I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, a great negotiator. I don't claim to be, I'm not a, uh, a great, like, like, you know, Minish, like the, the, the finite details. Scheduling. I need to, yeah, scheduling. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know that. Yeah, you got people for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you gotta have a good team. Yeah, yeah. so I, I always team. have a, have a good team, but what I am good at is spotting talent. I am at good good at fostering. I'm great with, with relationships. I've got 100%. a good reputation where I can see where people fit in. I feel like I've got a lot of skill sets. My best skill set is matching people up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like, like connect, I'm a connector. And uh, so just know my role 
but um yeah it's it's fun because you get you get to be a part of these guys careers and, and help with their success and and uh yeah i enjoy it mm. that's cool you're doing it yeah yeah I, I i did it by mistake um one of my boxing coach um is from england and um his one of his favorite people on the planet is Brian Rose, and and my coach took him to you know get a championship, and then Brian kind of retired. You know he done everything he's want to do in boxing, but but you know he's you know how it go. You been yeah. retired for two years, and I was like, hey man, I'm fighting boxing. You want to get on the same card? Because you know we share the same coach. And he's like, yeah yeah. You know I said, well, all right, where's your manager? He said, I don't got no manager. I'm retired. He said, you want to do it for me? So I did it for him. I end up giving him the most money he ever made. There you go. And he was happy as fuck. You know what the thing is with this and when I look for, for guys to match up with on management, cause I had a management company for years, you know, mm -hmm. Mike, Mike Roberts and yeah. Jeff Meyer, yeah. you know, those guys. <laughs> How they doing, man? Doing great. Tell me, so Mike, I just saw Mike Roberts, uh, this last weekend at the, uh, at the PBR and Jeff Meyer's doing some work for me. He's a, he's an, a, an attorney still. Good guys. Yeah. Great guys. Yeah. So with those guys, we had a manager coming for 10 years. We managed Chael Sonnen mm -hmm. through his whole career. We managed, uh, Anthony Pettis and, and TJ until he, TJ probably had about 12 different managers now. Now he's with Tiki, mm. right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, we managed a bunch of different guys throughout their career. But for me, I think the biggest thing with, with uh, the management side of things is um, getting with people that are thinking big, you know, like what we thought was a lot of money. Just you need somebody that understands how to think big and be like, that's not a lot of money, you know. Yeah, and I yeah. and I've I've got a yeah. great partnership right now with uh with uh Lloyd Pearson and and uh, Gary V Gary Vaynerchuk, a very uh yeah. you know very yeah, accomplished, he connected. Knows, he knows money. This, yeah, he, the guy knows about Mark. He knows everything. And then and then some of the biggest deals have been done. And it's just like guys got to think about what real money is. And some of these guys, you know, just don't understand what real money is. And Luke, we've had talks about this in the past. Yeah. You know. I mean, and I've I been there too, where it like, that seems like a lot of money and, and, and just yeah. the new era is like, but you got to think bigger. Yeah. What about this? How about you? what you see in, in Bear? He's, he's training Bear? now. Yeah. He's training now and training boxing. We think about getting some fights in. I want to see, I want to see the replay of him running from that little dog. I mean, that was a real, <laughs> if you guys get a chance to go back and see that was, I we'll thought he was joking that. at first. No, we'll and he goes, no, that, that thing's going to bite, yeah. that thing's going to bite my ankles. Yeah, yeah. So what? He's scared. He's scared. Of <laughs> That's a fighter. I ain't a fighter. <laughs> yeah. I'm more of a podcaster. Yeah, so, you see, yeah, but, you see Nate Diaz? Yeah. You're a podcaster, brother. Yeah, when but, he's yeah. talking about Bradley Martin. Yeah. What do you think about Bradley Martin, man? <laughs> I, I thought he was cool. Yeah, he's cool. Oh yeah, yeah. you did a podcast with him. Yeah, yeah. Yo, speaking of cool though, is the beef with you and TJ, is that done? Are you guys cool now? Because I heard you just moved to your block. You guys live on the same street now. Yeah. Yeah. No, we don't live in the same street, but we live in the same general vicinity. Yeah. He but uh, north, huh? here's the deal with, with me. Like, there's so much, I've got a lot of great friends, great relationships and everything else. I'm not ever close to anything, but uh, that being said, like. Can we bridge this gap? You guys are two of the most iconic names in the UFC and MMA history. I don't think that, that he really, I mean, we have a lot of mutual friends. Like some of my best friends are still friends with him, you know? So um, I don't have a problem with that. I don't, I don't have an issue with it. I think what needed to happen, and I don't need a fight. Y'all need to fight. So you, have you maybe seen, a fight, but a also podcast. like no, no. no I think I think, I think a face to face sit down with me and him in one room, and well, I'm, hopefully it doesn't I'm doing break that out on the fight. podcast. Yeah, think hey, about this. Instead of fighting, I know you want to. I, I don't think it, I don't think be a po I don't think it'd be a podcast no, thing. No, I think no, it'd be me fight. and him alone. Oh, that would be cool. No, 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 no. Hear me out. Just hear me out. You can, you guys can, you guys can disagree with that I said, but you know I'm going with this. Have you ever had a fight with somebody? Like you have a beef with somebody, and you fought each other, and now you respect each other. My last yeah. fight, my but last. Then, but then it's gonna, it's gonna get a lot worse than the build up to a fight. Yeah, but I'm my gonna last have to fight call with stuff. He's gonna call stuff. Come on. My last fight with Vanellay. Can think... you imagine that press tour? Oh yeah, because you guys are tight with TJ. Yeah, he's one of my athletes. Yeah. He's yeah. here tomorrow. Yeah. I didn't want to. I didn't want to bring him in today because Rampage not, said you guys might fight in here. I said, I was, hey, think I'll yeah, fight. How about, I'm not. Then. I mean, I'll fight back. I'm not. I'm not trying to fight. <laughs> don't, I don't. I'm not doing not that. The fighting, kind of not the fighting guy. I think is a housewarming present and a kind gesture. Give him a Tommy Bahama shirt and a pair of sandals. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> this is Chubby's. <laughs> Listen, is all Chubby I'm shirt. saying is, I think that what's been so amazing for me to watch these iconic guys growing up. I watched you. I have so much love for MMA and the sports community of, of mixed martial arts. And I feel that these are, you know, TJ Dillashaw and Uriah Faber are two of the, probably the coolest names the lighter weight divisions will ever have. And to have Thanks. you guys sit down together mm -hmm. and then squash that and then be able to sit down and laugh and talk about the history and your guys' careers, you would set the internet on fire because you're showing that as champions, as people, as men, that you can squash anything with, with the right mindset. I mean, that's like the greatest I've already, I, I mean, 
I don't even know. Like I've, I've got, I've got no issue doing that. That's I mean, awesome. but it's about like time, guy. time and energy. Yeah. Like Bear, Bear, if it, Bear's if a if billionaire. It, he'll pay you. He'll pay both of you. He'll, oh, <laughs> he'll be in there. He'll pay, right, he'll pay yeah. you guys lots, lots right, of tons so, of money. Anyways. Let's move on to the next thing. Did <laughs> you, need a, you need a ride, yeah, to, the you need a ride to the fight? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do tell it. you one thing. We'll we have a sprinter van. We'll do, but, get some wine. TJ yeah. and I, this is just like, like, like on the subject because we have a, a very good friend in common. And I was like, and I was like, TJ moved back to the hood. We you know whatever. And then, uh, He's like, yeah, man. He still thinks that you put Conor McGregor up to calling him out on the TV show, and I'm like, I was like, really? I've never said that on interview, and like my good friend who I trust told me that TJ thinks that that I put Conor McGregor up to to stirring things up tell, on the internet. Like, tell TJ what really happened, you, right there. We're gonna show it to him. I already said it. I said, me yeah. and Conor sitting there. I said, yo, you wouldn't believe it, man. You wouldn't believe it. And he was like, oh, I wouldn't believe it. Hmm. He Ooh. said Connor spun Connor. that out of control because Connor knows what he's doing. Connor's Connor one of the greatest minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, in, he's, that's really what happened. Yeah, yeah. We, appreciate you, we appreciate you squashing that, though. And I, I, I would love well, to see it for me personally. I mean, it's cool to say, though, on camera. I know that yeah, you have I never mean, said it before. I, I, look, yeah. I, even James Irvin and Scott Smith, those guys, there was a time when they were working, they were working at my gym and they went and opened a gym next to my new gym without me knowing and I was pissed about that for a long time. James is James is one of my good friends, and like I said, runs two of my gyms now and squash that beef. I've, I've like, yeah. I've got what's got what's beef, Scott Smith doing these days? That you remember? I, you, I remember you know Scott Smith. Smith. Remember when he laid down? Yeah. 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 Do you remember when Scott Bro, Smith? One of the most infamous shots of all time. Do you time. remember the Affliction dude? The Affliction guy. Oh man, what, the owner. Of the owner of Affliction. I forget his name. Todd or Tom? I think Tom. Yeah. Tom. So, anyways. Scott Smith was notorious for, for like pranky people and actually like crossing the line with chicks. Right. He would like, had no, <laughs> he had no boundaries. Yeah, no boundaries. And so, so Tom, I think it's Tom. I think it's Todd or Tom. Ta yeah. yeah. So he gets James or he gets Scott back and he like invites him, like has this chick set this thing up and get, gets Scott like tied up and like done it. Like, like, like he's going to get uh, whipped and all that kind of has the, the thing in his mouth and has him tied up and then busts in the room. And uh, what? Yeah. he let that happen. <laughs> yeah. he, well, he, thought, that? he thought it was him and a chick. Like he was setting up. It was like a domination. Oh, he's that, that kind of guy. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, oh, well, and I, I think I got that story. I could be wrong. Scott, if you're, I don't know where you're at, but if you got the real story, come on the yeah, podcast. Yeah, come, tell, yeah, come, come tell but, me. Now, now we're going to have to find out. But, the he, but he was, oh, he was like notorious for like crossing lines and thinking it was funny. If you like steal your chick or something. You yeah, know? man. He was a prankster. And, yeah. He's a prankster and this and that. And, uh, and so Tom got him back and got him all tied he must, he must in like a t shirt chick. with the uh, shit on. He must, yeah. he must throw one of Tom's chicks right? he got Yeah, him back. yeah, probably something like that. Yeah. Do you know who that, who you know who yeah, we're talking yeah, about? Yeah. They Do got, you know that, that knockout photo? I, no, but they, with a guy, he, he got he got hurt and he was like, Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then he's he like knocked, leaning over. Yeah, yeah. like fake. Like, that was a great fight. I was in the corner for that fight. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you watch all the UFCs? You watch I watch as many as I can. I mean, I grew up watching it. You watched it from the beginning, the first ones? Mm. You weren't even born then. No, I mean, I watch highlights, but I don't watch full fights from the beginning. I, I like, like, from my era. Like, from when he was fighting, probably was around my era. I'm 33. Yeah. So around hey, just, the same time. Mountain Dew headbands and stuff. Just to clarify, he was hurt for that fight, right? Oh, that yeah. Was, I mean, he was really, really yeah, hurt. He was yeah. really hurt. I mean, what, just, was it Pete Sell? It, there, it wasn't fake. Everyone, I, like, I think it was no, I think fake. It wasn't, was wasn't fake at all. I just want people to know that. Like, you have that moment where you like you feel it, right? It's a body kick or something, And you're like... Your instinct is there, but like if you, if you, if he ran in and it just it, had that it moment. Just showed his, that it moment. showed his heart, and it was just like everything that that would never happen again in a million years, you no. know. Just he just showed his heart and the time and everything. Oh. Just, and then I, I think if I can remember, I think he knocked him out. Then he, then he went. Ah, oh, then he went down. Yeah, he yeah. went down again. Yeah, yeah. Pete. Yeah. Like I think it was Pete Cell. They're on the Ultimate yeah. Fighter together. Maybe mm -hmm. I don't know. If, yeah, yeah. Pete Cell. Remember yeah. heard, heard him the shot. Yeah, he caught him in the body, and and Scott was like, <laughs> like that. Bending over and Pete Stell ran in and he goes, boom, and then went right back to being hurt. Yeah. Knocked him out. Yeah. Iconic. Yeah, it was badass. Those are shorts too. Yeah. But, A but, little but, rampage but, action with those. Why shorts. did James Irvin uh, retire? You I'm remember? Not sure. It was a long time yeah. ago. After Anderson Silva. Well, he, Silva? he fought Anderson, Anderson Silva, Silva went up. Smoked him. Uh, yeah. I remember okay. he was like, he was humiliated. James, I, was I, knew, I knew James Irvin before he was a fighter because uh, I was 
going to wrestle at the junior college when I was right out of high school and he was playing college football there and he was always just a big specimen. I don't know that he loved, loved fighting. He would, he would get emotional before fights and have some oh, okay. nerves and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. he was doing it cause he was great at it. I think he obviously loved training and, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, some people it's, yeah, it's a yeah. love hate. Yeah. Day, yeah. You know? I know. I know yeah. what you're saying. As we get ready to wrap this up, I know you got a big, big day. It's a UFC week here in Newport beach in Anaheim. And uh, I just want to kind of touch on two or three things. I feel like the YouTube community, as we've been asking them what they want to hear from these legends, when we have them on the show, we've been trying to incorporate those into the, into the show a little bit. So one of the most asked questions is, do you still have a rivalry? Do you still have a grudge with Dominic Cruz? No, I never really took that very serious either. I mean, I was happy to have an enemy, because <laughs> I really didn't have any, you know, like our team was pretty cool with everybody. Like I've always been, you know, Dana said it on our ultimate fighter show. He's like, you know, Connor came in all not liking Uriah, but he's a hard guy not to like, you know, he said that actually on the, on the show. And so I was just happy to have a, an enemy because it was good for hype and everything else. Yeah. For ratings. Yeah. yeah and, and, and there was a scenario where Dominic and I, there was like some, something with the UFC where, they must've had a change in the guards of PR or whatnot. We were like a couple months, like maybe a month out from announcing our next fight. And they had, he and I on a, uh, on a press tour together and went to a military base in San Diego. And they had us do a full day of the crucible, which is what these <clears throat> soldiers do to, to bond, to basically get brainwashed, to go die for their country and, and, and like just build this camaraderie. And it's really difficult. And, uh, we start out like thinking we're doing a, a, like a meet and greet. And next thing you know, we have a full day of working together as a team with like fallen soldiers quotes being told to us and, and, and all this stuff. <clears throat> so for that I, short, every, do not disturb every I, podcast. Dude, I put every, it on do every, not disturb. Every we're sorry about that. Yeah. He does it every podcast. So just, we're so used, so I was just about, to, we're 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 used used to, just about to start crying. We have yeah. the goat here. Joking. Yeah. We have the goat. <laughs> and you're doing that. So Tony, up? Tony so, Ferguson calls them boats. Goats come and go. Boats. They always stay afloat. Uh, I like say. that. Tony's, yeah. he's, a, Eat him, man. he's a cool cat. So, uh, you know, we had like a couple days where it was just like, he was asking me advice and this and that. He says that I used a bunch of the stuff that he told me against him later. That's probably not true. <laughs> Wait, at the, at the like military, military training no, no, camp? No, yeah. no, 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 no. But listen to what he just said. He said, that's probably not true. <laughs> it's probably, I don't know. <laughs> that's probably, he's got like an attorney mind. He's like an attorney up in yeah. there. Yeah. That's probably the possibility that some of it is true, but not all <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. But but the truth is, like, we broke down for a couple of days and then yeah. went right back to not liking each other. So And you guys were friends during that time? Like, for three days. Yeah. That's, that's for kinda, three days. That's kind of unique. And then you go back to, to hating uh, each other in grudge matches. And yeah, but go. I never really hated him. It was just like, I'm like, Man, that's right, not like me and my baby mama right now. <laughs> <laughs> which, which one? one? Which one? <laughs> the, 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 the last one I just created. Yeah. Let's mm. let's stop there now. Moving forward, we got to no, fight. I, I no got, more I babies. Got, I, 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 listen, when I was a kid, my mama, I told my mama, I said, I'm going to have kids all over the world, all different type of kids. I, I told her that. Uh -huh. I, I, you manifest. Most kids yeah. collect Pokemon cards. This guy collects kids. No, I think I think kids keep you young. You know, I got all, all my kids look different. My oldest son got blonde hair and blue eyes. Yeah, yeah. And my other son looked African. And then I got then my, then my then my third son. He looks like Tiger Woods. And my can daughter. We, can we get a? Can we get a? Uh, my daughter. Can we get a I remember two thousand three meeting his Seriously. oldest son. Yeah, I'm the same dad. He's yeah. light skin, everything. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, man, you got a cool look. Yeah. And he's in. Yeah. Grandpa he's, said, he's hey, dynamic. Family. Tell him thank you. I said, All right. He's like, thank yeah. You. I raised that boy since he was three years old. <laughs> Would you tell him? Tell him thank you. Yeah. 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 He told me. Yeah. I, I remember that. I too, raised like that boy since three years old. Yeah. You're supposed yeah, to you're, raise you're your kids. To, you're <laughs> no, 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 no. I raised it by myself. Oh, oh. I'm raised solo. it by myself. You mean solo? I was a single. Okay. Yes. I was a single parent. So you say I was a single parent? Yeah. I raised that boy. I raised that boy myself. Okay. So I had to tell him. We got to say somebody tell you something. You got to say thank you. Not now. I love it. He's cool. He's a good kid now. So as we go to wrap this up, you've trained some of the best talent. We know that. Who who's the best one twenty five to one forty five? Or you you've ever trained? I would say um, Ramon. <laughs> I would say you know like as far as like learning like skill set, body mechanics, and and like how fast he learns and takes things on. I would say Song Yidong, who's about to fight Peter Yan, and. Uh, <sighs> 
<laughs> Say, oh, between with? Songy Dong's name and my chin, this guy can't handle himself in this room right now. What's no, wrong, Raymond? Give this guy a wet towel. Give him a wet towel. No, 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 no,
to the university and and uh, all my guys that are going to build Wait, up this new talent. So you're telling me that college kids, I, I need to break this down for the people <clears throat> watching this. You're telling me that college kids are now going to be able to go to college, be signed to like Team Alpha Male, train while they're in college and become professional MMA fighters. And then while they're in college. While they're in college. And yes. then is, are they going to be able to compete while they're in college against yes. other colleges? It's huge. Like I don't care. I, they're going to they're gonna be able to compete anywhere it's not it's, can they can they go fight in the ufc or yeah they can go fight in the ufc i guarantee you in the next three years we'll have you know a couple fighters that are in college and in the ufc and unbelievable yeah and so it, and this is uh, there's are uh you doing this because you love fighting or you want to sign all these guys and have like the next batch of talent so president luke wood is the new president at sac state and um what a name. he's yeah, he's 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 a G. He's 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 our age. He's I think he's 40, 40 years old, forty one years old, and he uh, <laughs> rampage. You gotta take a break, man. Uh, I didn't say nothing. I'm just okay. jealous, dog. I'm just yeah. Jealous. Yeah. So, yeah. So Luke Wood is so a Luke president. Wood, he, he's a president. He's, he's an amateur boxer. Oh wow! He just took over the Sac State. He's been training at my gym, and uh, oh, so he loves it. And he had there's a there's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> He loves right. fighting. That's why he's doing this. Bro, he's drinking he alpha male. What are we like tag team listen, teams? Stop, Luke Rock listen, the reason, the the reason <laughs> why this guy is backing it is because he has an appreciation for the fight game. What this guy's doing is going to revolutionize the fight world. Hey, it's genius, He's going to have the next top hey, 20, 30, man. 40 athletes. They're yeah. all going to be champions before they yeah. even, I mean, I get it. It's so genius. it's And so stop, dog. there's a bunch There's a bunch more to this whole thing I'm putting together, and that's one piece of it. Um and you but, can't talk about everything though, right no, now. Yeah. No, right now. No. But it's gonna be badass. You guys are all love can you, it. Can you uh, come back when it's when it's ready? Can you come back yeah. and, and tell us more about it? Yeah, when it's man. Ready? Yeah, I'm gonna I'll be wearing a, a G string. <laughs> 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 hey, 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 where one of the things those, those ladies be wearing this inside of your G string. Make sure you cut you it out it. right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby, a a chin string. Make sure you bring it. Make sure you bring it. You try to impregnate too. my chin, we're gonna have trouble, though, man. You <laughs> hey, you're I know you, haven't, I know you haven't done any movies with that chin, man. You, I was in a movie. Yeah, was in a movie. In a, what, what movie? I was in that. Uh, he even jumped out of a couple. I'm talking, about, I'm, talking, I'm talking about real movie, not porn. Jumped out of helicopter. Too, right? You guys both jumped. I was out on a, a movie with The Rock, <clears throat> Rampage. Actually, you was in Rampage. Yeah, I saw that movie. I yeah, I had I had a mohawk and a tattoo on my neck. I'm gonna go back. And, I'm gonna oh go my back god, and. yeah, uh, that's incredible. I'm gonna go back and watch it. You that's, really think all white people look the same, man? Yeah, that's incredible. That's true, though. Wow, that's true. That's true. I, I, I can't believe I can, that. I can, you know, I know why you didn't see me. What was he looking at, guys? <laughs> My chin. No, just, you know what? Just slobbering I, over the chin. Hey, you know what I be doing though? I be, I ain't gonna lie. I be playing poker on my phone while I watch movies. I have like this attention thing. I can so do. Why do you go to the movies? <clears throat> but I, but I, still, I still got to do something with my hands, like play poker or something like that, or text <clears throat> while watching a movie and stuff like that. I've been That's today's day and age, man. We've been hooked. Yeah. You know, you, We're you, cyber what's, hooked. what's the uh, what's We're the zombies. movie where it's a uh, social dilemma? Oh yeah, you yeah, see yeah, the yeah, social yeah. dilemma yeah. where it it basically explains it. We hired the smartest people in the world to make something that we don't need to keep us hooked on our phones. So like like especially old dumb guys like us, we're like we're a a, a slave to the algorithm. So it's like you're like you want you want to hear something even more fucked up? Civil War, the movie's coming out. Mm -hmm. I believe the Obamas put that together. <laughs> Yeah, they've been making movies, though. But making, they've been making this movies. is they're another good a, point. They're making a, a movie about civil war in America. Like, Are you sure about put that? Put that together, dog. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I say, you, you, I mean, that check, sounds like check, something my check, mom will tell me. And she's, check she's the facts. A, I, somebody told me about it. Sounds like a Reddit form that no, you went real shape right. in, Luke. They check just the made fact. a movie. They're, they're making the movies. Word, they just leave the word behind or something. Check the Obama's made that shit. I'm not joking. He's saying the truth, The Obama's making movies now, bro. <laughs> right, so, so listen, Civil War. Th let me prophetic. tell you what I learned on Social Dilemma, the movie I'm talking about. Mm. And I try to tell my mom because my mom, it gets all down a tunnel on all this misinformation. And she thinks, yeah, you know, right. everyone, all the people are actors and you can see the ear coming off. I mean, Rampage probably thinks this stuff too. Like yeah, yeah, Donald so Trump's got a mask on and he's not really him or well, not Donald Biden, Trump. Biden. Yeah, or yeah, someone yeah so all that stuff. Someone my mom goes deep yeah. on this stuff. On Social Dilemma, Whatever you're into, you're gonna get that fed to you. So if you're just looking at like 
big butts all day. Like I guarantee you, pull up your feed, he, Rampage. He ain't he ain't if you pull up Rampage feed, page. his is you know, you know Rampage ain't a big butt guy. He yeah. likes he likes some little. He's yeah. right. Little He's right. Yeah. He likes look some little. He's right. Look at the feet. Look. <laughs> look at let me, let me show They're you all guys. little butts. They ain't big butts. So look. I like. I like. So this. So whatever. Whatever you're into is gonna feed you. This is all Asian women. Not one person. They're all itty bitty. Listen. There's not one. You go all the way down. Listen. Before we these are all so look. I'm sorry. So when you start looking at like yeah. Obama conspiracy theories, your things gonna be populated with all this stuff. So who knows if it's really true? Because my mom pull sends up, me some whack ass stuff, and, and I'm like, mom, you get good chick, for you, you Yeah, let me see. Yeah, let me see. Let me see. Hey, let me see. No. Hey, I got counseling. I'm not looking at mine. Look at. Look at this right. is amazing. Oh, uh, Bear, I saw one. Yours, I, there was one fist fight that showed up, and then this took its place right here. <laughs> <laughs> that took its place. You're, was, you're a dirty little dog. And then you wonder why you have 13 not, kids. Not one, not one woman that isn't Asian on here. That's kind of that's f that's fucked up. I like all women. Not as much as you like all these girls. The Asians are my favorite, no. though. I know. No, everybody's got I've a taste. That. He's got I've a signature that. taste. Yeah. Listen, Uriah, I want to say thank you for coming. I want to say on on in terms of like the the community and I, and I really stress that like we're doing this for the for the combat sports community and what you're doing with this college thing I think is going to be phenomenal. We definitely want to get behind that Jackson as a brand. We're the number one men's jewelry brand and we definitely pride ourselves on making sure that we can instill and boost confidence in men at the same time making the most quality product and I know that that's something you take pride in and putting out the best quality fighters, the best quality gyms, the best quality businesses. So we're for sure excited to get behind you on that. Um one thing before I leave, I just want to know in your eyes, who is the UFC MMA GOAT? Just strictly in the UFC, who do you think the greatest of all time is? Oh, man. That's really hard to say. I mean, John Jones hasn't been beat. So, That's but it. there's also, uh, you know, if you look at what the tainted, not tainted because of, of, yeah, of things that yeah, happened, yeah. it's hard to say. 100%. And I, and I take that in consideration, but, but you know, I, the reason why I don't say nothing about that, because that shit ain't going to fight for you though. But uh, let me, this is, this is, it, it ain't going to fight for listen, you though. This, you're talking to the wrong guy here when it comes to that, because I never did, I never did one thing. I remember when, when it, they made it legal for you to do the, uh, the testosterone. The testosterone yeah. and you're like, man, I feel like I'm a kid again. I remember watching that going, yeah, fuck. I never did one thing. And listen, for guys that are mentally weak, steroids and that stuff doesn't help. For guys that are mentally strong and strategic and just will do anything to win, a fucking thousand percent it helps. You kidding me? You can train twice as much. You get more muscle. The thing that, that, the thing that happens to you, though, is your body falls apart because your joints aren't supposed to handle what you're doing. Your right, so, so, so intestines, you see, and, all and, and, and there's also stomach. You know the reason why I said it because um, I'm like you. I, I'm always against it, but I did take TRT once I got when they uh, said in, it was legal. When yeah. it was legal, when they got when they got injured, I, yeah. when I got injured, it did help me. But when I was fighting in Japan, all those guys was on this shit, right? And, yeah, just, and, I mean, I beat, and I beat and I beat some of them, and I, yeah, well, I, I didn't I'm, think I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say you got some too. natural. I mean, I'm the same way. I'm a, I'm a naturally gifted guy. Also, you have your gifts. You know, yeah, that's why that happens. And then, but somebody that doesn't have that, which is. It's part of the game. Yeah, you got to use what I'm, you got. If, if you don't have that, you can go yeah. get it somewhere else. I'm, That's yeah. fucking cheating. I'm, I'm going to say this and I, and I hope <laughs> That's it's That's like, fucking illegal. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to say this. I hope it's not in bad taste because the guy's passed away and um and he was all he was a great guy but I just I, I never knew for sure cuz I, I I don't know I know nothing about drugs but I always assumed that Kevin Randleman was was I think they're pretty open about that well, I, I, I didn't know I never I, I never I never asked he also him. fought against him yeah so I fought him and yeah. that's the only thing that my my team was like worried about and I was like oh, you know I well imagine I, if he wasn't on the stuff how you know yeah, the he, mother nature would have would have made the rightful king in yeah, every so, scenario. Yeah. So RIP, I'm, I'm not trying to disrespect the man, but I was I was worried about that a little bit and he didn't make weight. People don't know this. He he, he didn't make weight for our fight. And I'm like, I said, I, I don't, I said, I don't care. I, yeah. I, he was like way, way over 205 when I fought him. And um, but he was, the, he was pretty Yeah, people was worried that people, that people I don't worried. think that was the secret. I think that's yeah. pretty open. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> I, didn't, yeah. I, didn't know he was. I think there's a lot of guys in the game. As we, uh, a lot of guys in the game. Secrets. But then I beat. Secrets then, and non-secrets. I had to fight Vitor Belfort, my first fight in the UFC. Was he on anything? In Brazil when they were hiding him out there because this is the only place oh, he could yeah. fight on TRT, which is crazy because he just like, Man would morph every every fight. Yeah, yeah, he got big. You, it was like he's he a great. I knew I was though. fighting like you know, a superhuman. <clears throat> and it's easy. It's easy to look. I got a lot of friends that have been even caught doing it. So it's like, 
I hate to hate too much, but I'm just saying, if you want to really find out who's the baddest motherfucker on the planet, then you got to take that out of the equation. Mm. Otherwise, it's just tainted. It really is. I, agree, I, agree I can you. say it because I didn't do it. That's yeah. all. Right. Listen, I agree with you. I think uh, boxing, MMA, and, and football, the only sports that it shouldn't be allowed. But I, I don't care if baseball players. For sure, if you're hitting players, some, uh, yeah, 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 for sure, that's, if you're that's hitting some. That's, that's my opinion. I know you had Leoto on here, but you could tell, like, Leoto went and fought uh, Gegard Mousasi in Brazil. And I knew he was... <laughs> Dude, I don't know how people keep calling me. Anyway, I don't know you how you turn the ring off. Dude, I put it on. Are you do just not doing that to feel important. Yeah, I, yeah, I put yeah. it That's on. Do not disturb. Listen, I put my yeah. phone on. Do not disturb. Say it real quick. About but anyway, Michira. like I gotta wrap so, it up. So with Machida, he fought Gegard Mousasi in Brazil, and you could see he was like he had a little extra confidence. Ooh. Machida, Machida had extra confidence. Gegard, I came back to fight Machida here in the states where you got to be tested, and I knew they were gonna take something from him. I knew I, I seen his confidence dwindling. and every 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 day got closer to the fight. Every start I, I score up on that. I just knew that it wasn't there. Gegard knew it too. Me and Gegard actually talked about it. Yeah. And like by the time we got to the fight, he was broken. I knew I already had him. Yeah. I mean, everybody's it's, it's, it's different. Yeah. It's, it's a different thing. As we go to wrap this up, do you, you get into, yeah, I'm good. He wanted to go outside. Okay. As we go to wrap this up, um, is there anybody you still want to fight though? Is there someone that you're like, yo, if, you, if UFC gives me that fight, I'm doing it no matter what? Is there one person, one name? No. Or are you good? You're comfortable with everything? Yeah, I've been comfortable forever. I, Hall of Fame. What I love to do, though, my favorite thing is to do jiu-jitsu. Like, mm. I, I, I'm a, I lead by example. Like, if I get a bunch of young Russian guys in there that want to, like, show off, and I'll be like, guys, these guys want to get some grappling, some extra rounds. Everybody want to go? And no one says they want to go. I'll be like, all right, let's go. Wow. Like, I, I love, like, testing myself. Um, not 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 fighting yeah, as much yeah, yeah. more jujitsu and every grappling day, as much. Are you training every day? Uh, I I teach a couple of days a week and then I and I roll maybe three days a week. That's all I do for fitness. You don't nice. run or nothing no more. You don't do nothing stuff. Huh? I'm not a yeah. I just don't. I don't have time. Yeah. I got two babies at home. I got businesses up the wazoo. I'm excited to watch this the the fight against Jan. I know you and your team are prepped. I know that's gonna yeah. be a big one. Peter Yan and then and against Song. And then we also have Yan Zan Yao, who's fighting Wei Li for the world championship coming up. How are you getting all the talent from around the world? Just we, we attract it. Everybody yeah. just hits you up. We have our gym. There's probably 17 different countries on the mat on any given day. And like the gym now is, is it's, it's a mega gym, which is pretty good because I've, you know, it's, I've been, it's been self-funded. And, and how, uh, many, how many professional fighters you got in there? Uh, maybe 60. 60? How what? many how many, 60? how many how many in the UFC? Because Killcliff's got like 40. Like they they're getting crazy over there too. Yeah, they got they they've got a lot of resources. I'm yeah. I'm just a retired fighter, you know. No, no. Trying to I'm trying just, to help guys out. It's impressive. Like but how many how many you I have think in maybe the UFC? Any given time, maybe 20, 25, something like that. Can I say something? Yeah. Interviewing and sitting down with, with you and, and Korean Zombie make me feel like I ain't did shit with my life. Brother. I ain't did shit with the A team. Brother. That, but you guys, are, you guys are, you guys are, you know, doing a whole a whole bunch of positive stuff and creating a legacy. Like your gym and stuff like that is is world known and stuff like that. And 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 Zombie, he's almost a billionaire over there. Hey, and, <laughs> think about I'm going to tell you this. This needed to happen. Quint Rampage Jackson on a on like like he said about the Connor thing. Nobody knows this guy was was the king of the 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 quick whip and and I mean. Causing a scene I was for years, man. Connor McNigger. Hey. <laughs> You're the most iconic so, man on the mic. When they even, talk about even, McGregor even, 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 you. even the, the times when you had some fucking drama going on, that was world news at the time, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I, I, I wanted to do start you remember, a gym. Do you remember us having, we, we, there was a house party in LA. We were sitting there one time. And me, You're in the kitchen. I'm sitting there and I, and I was talking to you about the situation out in the UK. Do you remember that? No. You want to remind me? I no, I don't want to because you told me, hey, don't, hey. It was like a tender subject for the UK uh, situation what, in the gym. What, what, what I do? Wolf like, Slayer? Yeah, Wolf Slayer. When they ripped me off and shit? Well, I, 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 I said to you, I said, hey, I heard it was like fucking gangster out there. Like, oh, yeah. and, and then you said, hey, sh- no, hey don't talk about but that. But you know what? That motherfucker, they, they ain't as hard as they yeah. were, was proclaiming to be. Because Bisbing was in the same mix. Yeah, yeah, Bisbing yeah. was in the same. That's what, He's still getting fucked with from what I understand. Hey, this is, this is the thing. Man, Bisbing was, so, get going yeah, was so cool. That's why I joined that team to get some, some heat off of Bisbing. So Bisbee can get away. That's why I joined Wolf's Lair. Come on, man. Real talk. 
Did you get in trouble or something? Man, no, no. You're Rich doing up. all this stuff for other people, like that. Oh, well, when you I, tattooed your hair, that was for your other people. Mm. Now you doing the weird <laughs> slaves for other the people. Girls. Come on, he man. Did that for the girls. Did, come on. Ramon, Ramon, On that note, Rampage, you and your tattoo head, we appreciate you. But that, and and I just want to second that because I say it every episode, and I always say it. We did this, and he was the first guy I called when I said, "Yo, Rampage." My oh, jewelry bro. brand's taking the off. Best, man. Let's do something. And Rampage was the first guy hey, to pick up the phone. A1 Combat, Team Alpha, let's get a sponsorship going, man. Let's 100%. 100%. You got the dough. We're only 33. You can make hey, Stop, you can start, start spending rumors. that start, cash, hey, baby. Hey, hey, you're, 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 you're a young billionaire. Hey. You're starting yeah, rumors. Baby. Nah, you got to stop. You got, you got hey, green job. You're a young billionaire. Hey, you about to get trapped too now. You're going to make it real hard for negotiations. You're a young billionaire. Hey, listen. The Jackson Podcast, once again, MMA community, combat sports, and everything else out there that's watching. We appreciate you. We're trying to bring on the most iconic Hall of Famers of all time. I couldn't find anybody better than this man right here. Your eye favor, Absolutely. Rampage Jackson, Luke Rockhold. We appreciate you guys. Don't forget to leave a comment, like, subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on uh, Jackson Podcast Instagram and use podcast15 on jackson.com for 15% off site-wide. We just dropped our brand new Cuban 8 millimeter sweat poof, brand new class, and it's perfect for every day. Luke, I'm Bear to GDO. We out. Thank you. Can we call you Luke Chokehold? Sweat poof.